Good morning and welcome to Riverside National Cemetery. On behalf of our director and our staff, we would like to offer you our most sincere condolences and say that we are really honored that you have chosen Riverside National Cemetery as the final resting place for your loved one. Before I do turn it over to the honors team, a little bit about what's going to happen. We're going to fold our flag now. Then there's going to be a rifle salute. The rifle salute can be quite loud. So if you do have sensitive hearing, please cover your ears. Then there will be the playing of taps. And at that time, I'll have you all to stand. Any current or prior military, please give a final hand salute. All others, place your hands over your heart and face the flag. Then there will be the folding and the presenting of the, presenting of the flag. I do apologize. If anyone does have on a cell phone, if you please put it on vibrate during the ceremonies, we'd appreciate it. I'll now turn it over to the honors team. Gentlemen, please rise for military honors. As I stated earlier, if you are a foreign service member, please give a final hand salute for a fallen comrade. 
Almost please sir. Hand over your hand. Please lie. Thirty-eight years of Frank Reed's life was summed up in this sobering right, reserved for men and women who are killed in action, and the honorable veterans who have served before them. The solemn occasion demands a reflection on a life that Frank was willing to place in harm's way. And I can imagine the firm stance of attention and steady salute of our brother during the rendering of these honors. We're going to say a few words today about family, flag, and friendship. These were the three codes of honor that define the life of Frank Reed. We've come not only to honor a man, but to remind one another of a man who touched the lives of each one that are gathered here today. It's simply our admission of his significance that draws us together. And our gathering is a unique one. There will never be another gathering of these people ever again in this lifetime. It's Frank that draws us together. Some knew Frank as father, grandfather, and others as a true friend. And each of you have a different view of him. In just a few moments, I'm going to ask some of you, or give some of you the opportunity to say a word or two about Frank and your friendship with or relationship with him. But to begin, I'm going to ask his son, Dwayne, to come and speak. 
Thanks, Norm. <laughs> you know, we're here to uh, celebrate and honor my dad and uh, celebrate his life. How he went caught us all by surprise. Yeah. Didn't see it coming. Didn't see that one coming. Yeah. So he had to be in a lot of pain. And that's what hurts. Uh, no one must, he must have been feeling to do that. But, uh, you know, we think, could I have done more? But we also know for him. And uh, when he makes up his mind, you know, pretty hard to change it. And in his mind, um, this is what he wanted to do. He always had a reason for what he did. You know, I think we all got our stories, Frank's stories, about his stubbornness, you know, making his mind. One of my favorites is uh, he was retired and he had come back as a flight instructor <coughs> at March, I think with Link as a subcontractor. And, um, you know, he's a pretty buttoned up guy. Right? Well. Uh, and some of you here may know the story better than me, but uh, the way I recall it, he told me, was that uh, he'd been there several years, um, and he wasn't running the simulator, like Buzz Norton, he was an instructor, and um, wasn't happy with how things were going. Um, so out loud, someone heard him say, for, for two cents, I'd quit this chicken shit out there. Well, he went to lunch, came back, there were two pennies on his chair. He quit on the spot. So, you know, that's Frank. We're gonna miss him. Yeah. But he knows that if he's with Ada Peace, he's with Joanne, love his life. You know, and how fitting today's her birthday. We missed you, Dad. You're my hero. Goodbye.